I want to tell you a story. This past summer, while I was driving and I was praying, I heard God say this to me. I want you to leave your house, where I was living with three other friends, and embark on a new journey, alone with him. The words kept straight through me, but they also gave me a sense of excitement and adventure. I had no idea where I'd live, what I would do for work, what my friendships would look like. I wasn't very good at being on my own. In fact, I almost always filled any time I had alone immediately by calling people or going around someone's house. Yet this time, I knew at the very core of my being something of what God was asking of me. A few days later, I was on social media, scrolling through as you do, and I came across this video of a man who rides a penny farthing. I don't know if you know what a penny farthing is, but it's essentially a bicycle with one huge wheel at the front and a little wheel at the back. And I'd never actually seen a penny farthing before and I thought it was just brilliant and so old fashioned. And the man was an older gentleman who wears his own steampunk clothes. He rides his bicycle through the sweet English villages and, and the countryside. And he just generally brings joy to the people in the area he lives in. In fact, it was his neighbours who had set up the social media account because he can't actually read or write. And I followed the account straight away. And then, to be honest, I thought a little more about it. The next day, I was reading my book called God Conversations by Tanya Harris. Every chapter is about a story, an example of a conversation she had with God. And I'm the kind of person who has to finish a chapter before I can even put the book down. So this was a brand new chapter. It was called On My Own. It was all about how Tanya was to plant a church on her own without a partner or a husband or any key individuals. I'm three pages into the chapter when it reads, it came around three months into my new venture. A vision flashed across my mind as I was driving to work. The image was of a penny farthing, one of those 19th century bicycles with an enormous front wheel and a tiny wheel at the back. Firm but kind words followed. That's the old fashioned way. Later on in the chapter, two years after Tanya had received that picture of the penny farthing. Uh, she's driving through Sydney, Australia, and one of her friends says, look, pointing to the middle of the street. Why on earth is someone riding a bike like that on such a busy road? It's so dangerous. And Tanya says all she notices is how tiny the back wheel is in comparison to the front. So I sort of laughed, noticing how appropriate and coincidental that was. And I had a feeling God had his hand in it. There are very few coincidences in a life of faith. Fast forward now a couple of months and I'm going to be leaving the house I was living in and everything had just fallen into place at the last minute as it happens. Everything that God had promised came to be. I have a new flat lined up, a new job for September. Now I'm on the way to the airport. I'm flying back from Germany and I knew as soon as I landed in London, I would have a lot of packing and moving and other deadlines waiting for me. We're driving along the main road in Munich. My mind is thinking of a million things. When I look out of the window to my right, and what do I see? But a man on a penny farthing. So what does this have to do with living the life of faith in the public sphere? Well, I think a life of faith is a little bit like riding a penny farthing. And I want to share some lessons that I learned from this wonderfully odd gift that God gave me this summer. The first lesson is, Christ must be the big wheel. The Your Conference this year is titled, The Jesus-Centred Life. And I want to suggest one way you can make Jesus the centre, by picturing him as the front wheel of your life, or your bicycle. But how do we do that? Through intimacy and imitation. These words are from St. John Paul II and Pope Benedict's call of the new millennium. If you look at a penny farthing, the wheels are actually really close, much closer than on a modern day bicycle. Likewise, as the front wheel moves, so the back wheel follows. We are called to be intimate with Christ and to imitate him. And the only way we can truly do that is through prayer. St. Jose Maria Escriva once said, I am moved by our Lord's habitual attitude of prayer, the way he turns to the Father before beginning his public life, retiring to the desert for 40 days and 40 nights to pray. We too must have this time of prayer every day, 
before we begin our public life. We must retire to the desert, and that means our quiet place of solitude, alone with him, the Father, perhaps for 40 minutes, to restore our intimacy with him and to open our inner ear to hear his voice. How many moments throughout the day is God trying to communicate with us, but we cannot see and cannot hear because we have not first tuned into God's voice. And yet it must not just be about tuning in once. St. Paul tells us to pray without ceasing. And St. Jose Maria also said, we need to aspire to become contemplative souls in the street, in the midst of our work, by maintaining a constant conversation with our God and not breaking it off at any time of the day. If we really want to be loyal followers of the Master, this is the only way. So living faith in the public sphere must be about choosing Christ as our big wheel and maintaining that constant focus and conversation throughout the day. If the back wheel falls off a penny farthing, the front wheel could technically keep going because the rider is sitting on that wheel. I guess a bit like a unicycle. But the back wheel would spin out of control, lose direction and eventually stop moving. Keep Christ as your front wheel, remain intimate with him and imitate him in everything. The second lesson is that it can look dangerous and it requires courage. So living faith in the public sphere can sometimes look and feel out of place at best and dangerous at worst. I remember telling my family about my job with Catholic Voices. It means I get to go on television and radio, cool, and talk about Jesus. Wait, what? And some of my friends have warned me that interviewers in the media will eat me alive. But God has told us, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say, but say whatever is given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Living examples of faith have slowly crept, crept into the corners of our society because we have let it. People say they don't want to hear about it, that it doesn't make sense, it's not the place for it. But remember how in that book Tanya's friend said, why on earth is someone riding like that in the middle of a busy road? Life has got busy. We're like sports cars driving in and out of traffic and zooming up the motorway. Perhaps it's not the bike which is the danger. We need to ask the Holy Spirit for courage. Courage to witness, courage to speak, courage to be joyful when the world is in panic. Courageous leaders are needed now more than ever. All the experts on leadership are saying so. And yet we forget that courage is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray for a renewed outpouring of courage upon all those who work in public life. So I want to finish by encouraging you to look up <clears throat> a penny farthing. You know, watch a video of someone riding it. Notice how they take a run up. They have to build momentum before stepping up. Living faith in the public sphere is much like that. We must prepare. We must have courage and we must step up. Always following Christ's lead. Thank you so much. And I pray you enjoy the rest of your conference.